The final step in creating a sequence diagram is to validate it. I've created a list that will help you to identify the things that are important to look for in the sequence diagram. The first two have to do with parameters. Each message includes any parameters needed and the object sending the message has the data for those parameters. So consider login. So the login function can't work unless it has the username and password. So those become a parameter that is sent with the message. And then we validate does in fact the interface is sending the message so does the interface have the username and password and sure enough that was sent by the user by the customer um, the username and password were entered and so now the interface has it and is able to send that message to the login uh, the login message with those parameters let's do another example over here we have um, an add line item Right, so add line in item function and it has a movie item as a parameter because the line item needs to know the movie item that it that it's representing, that it's recording on the transaction. So we have to say there it exists, it has the parameter it needs. Now we need to decide does the sending function, right, the sending object so inventory record is the sending object it's sending the message does it have a movie item so we we don't see where it received one anywhere in the sequence so let's go validate that then in the class diagram and we look at the inventory record and sure enough it has a container of movie items so one of its attributes is that container of movie items so it has a movie item that it can send here we have another method create and this is creating a line item and for the line item to be created it needs to know that movie item so uh, again the parameter needs to be sent now we validate does the sending object which is the transaction have the line item and we can see in the sequence that it received that movie item just recently and so now it can send it as a parameter to line item so a couple of ways that the that an calling object can have the data for the parameters either it contains it as one of its attributes and we can validate that here or it has received it previously in the sequence diagram and we can validate that in the sequence diagram itself the next one is that the object receiving a message has a function that matches the message and here we look at the class diagram to verify that so if we go back to the login and we saw that we had this login message sent and so then the receiving one is the people object so we need to go make sure that the people class has a function login and sure enough it does and we can go back to the other ones that we just saw where we were um, here we have add a line item and the receiving object is a transaction so we go in here and we validate let's see where's the transaction and it has add a line item so the function exists so you go do that with each function now here's a, kind of an exception it's not really an exception but it, it helps you you need to understand that uh, how it works so here we have a create function and the receiving object is a line item if I go to the line item there is no function called create so we have to remember that when we create these class diagrams we don't put in the functions that are common to all classes the constructor the getters the setters you notice that they don't show up in here those are common to all classes and each of these classes will have those and what we see here is that this create is in fact a constructor it's creating a new object of type line item and so here's one case where we won't actually see that function name because it's a constructor and therefore doesn't show up in our analysis class diagram All right, the next one is that the object returning a value has the value or is able to compute it. So when you return a value, so these are those dotted lines, right? So here we have the line item object returning a line item. And sure enough, it has that. That is, in fact, itself. So the line item is created. Then it's returned to the transaction, where it will be added to the transaction's container of line items. And so it has that for sure. Uh, let's see up here. 
if we can find another one. Only if I can make this work. There we go. So here we have a transaction being returned from the function add transaction. Does the customer have a transaction? Well, if we look, we can see that the customer, in fact, has a whole container of transactions. So we can find it there that it has that. We can also see that it just received a transaction, right? One was just created and then added to that customer's container of transactions. So two different ways we can validate that it actually has that transaction to return. Here we can validate that people is returning a customer. Let's see if people has that value to be able to return. And sure enough, people has a container of persons. And some of those persons are customers, some are employees. So it has this container that it can choose the right customer, the one, in fact, the one that matches the username and password, and return that object because it contains them. So you want to look at every time something is returned that the object returning it has it. Uh, we also want to validate that message lines and, relearned, and return lines are drawn correctly. So message lines are solid with a black arrowhead. Return lines are dashed with an arrowhead. Not all functions have return lines, so there are some what would be a void function, would not have a return item uh, or return value. So here we have rent movie doesn't have a return value. Uh, we have Lots of these do have return values, though, so you want to pay attention and see uh, what things are returned. Then make sure that those are valid. All right. Um, the other thing, so those are the two lines, and they need to be labeled. So message lines are labeled with a function call. Return lines are, re are labeled with the value or values being returned from the function. The next one is to verify that the objects that exist at the beginning of the scenario are aligned across the top of the diagram. So the customer, the external customer, existed before this scenario began, and it began with them opening the app. And before they opened the app, the people object existed, the customer, the internal representation of this particular customer existed because this is not a new customer, this is an existing customer. So they already existed in the system. The movie inventory existed, all of these objects existed so they're aligned across the top of the scenario. Then the next one talks about those that didn't exist. Objects that came into existence during this scenario are aligned at the point of creation. So here we're creating a new transaction, and it, that object shows up when it was created. Here we're creating a new interface. So when this, ex, this external customer opens the app, it creates a brand new interface for that customer to interact with. So we see the creation of that. And whenever the, something is created during the scenario, the object actually shows up at the time of creation. Then execution occurrences align with object message sending and returning interactions. So they, here you have an execution occurrence showing up when this object is engaged in receiving or sending messages. And we can look across and see that here this execution occurrence exists when this object is engaged in receiving or sending mess or returning messages. Okay, so receiving, sending messages, or sending return values. Then the execution occurrence. And notice how you can start an execution occurrence and then the transaction is not engaged in all of these message sendings, but then once again is engaged later. So the execution currents does not go through the whole thing. It only is on the sections of the lifeline where that object is actually engaged in passing messages. And finally, as in many of the diagrams we've done before, we need to check that all the functional requirements of the system are demonstrated in at least one of the sequence diagrams. So here you go through that functional requirements list and you look at each line item and say, does it show up here on somewhere? Can you see that functionality on at least one of the sequence diagrams? So this is not something we can validate with just this one sequence diagram. This would be something we need to validate with our whole collection of sequence diagrams.